Processed carbohydrates are the very food that feed pathogens. Many families transfer their child's diet from breakfast cereals, pasta, milk, chips, hot dogs, macaroni and cheese, to a gluten-free, casein-free diet, processed diet made of rice, sugar, soy, potato starch, and commercial products full of denatured fats and lots of ingredients that children with autism should not have. You will find plenty of companies selling products that we think of as okay for our children. In these common gluten-free, casein-free products, the ingredient list include potato starch, sugar, rice, floured, milled corn. And in many cases, there's an improvement in behavior, but not in intestinal function. But it's unfortunate that many parents, including myself, had this false sense of security that just because a food was gluten-free and casein-free, it was okay. The specific carbohydrates goal, diet's goal, is to heal the GI tract and rid the fungal and bacterial overgrowth. The foods that are allowed on the diet are based on a chemical structure. When there's injury, the intestines are inflamed, and it can't break down the molecules that are too large to be transported across the small intestinal surface into the bloodstream. So instead of entering the bloodstream, the undigested starches and sugar molecules serve as a source for food for bacteria and fungus. On the specific carbohydrate diet, the allowed carbohydrates are monosaccharides. They have a single molecular structure that allow them to be easily absorbed by the intestinal wall. A monosaccharide is a single sugar, and it is in a form that can be absorbed even if there's an injured intestine. Those carbohydrates would be honey, fruits, and vegetables. A disaccharide contains two sugar molecules, milk sugar, maple syrup, commercial snacks with table sugar in it, and the polysaccharides are much more complex. They are chains of sugars and very difficult to digest, so that would be grains, including corn. <clears throat> so disaccharides and polysaccharides cannot be absorbed for the simple reason they cannot cross the cell membrane. They must be digested into a monosaccharide by the brush border enzymes, which are missing in many of these children. You keep in mind the specific carbohydrate diet is not limiting the quantity of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates provide energy. This is not a low-carbohydrate diet, nor is it a high-protein diet. <clears throat> I, I did want to mention what I, I mentioned uh, last evening, too, because it's a problem that families are reluctant to discuss, is children who are smearing their feces. If your child is smearing feces, get the corn products out of their diet. Uh, we're not sure uh, why that is, but we've seen it enough to know that there's a correlation between children who are ingesting corn and smearing their feces. <coughs> so there are lots of details which this uh, presentation will not allow. But basically, the children can eat proteins, beef, lamb, pork, poultry, fish, eggs, they can eat frozen and fresh fruits and vegetables. They can have pancakes, muffins, cookies, and all sorts of snack food items that are made from a nut flour base. Um, common daily choices would be for breakfast, eggs, cooked in coconut oil, hazelnut pancakes, banana waffle muffins, banana egg pancakes, almonds with om omelets with vegetables, uh, soups, salads, chicken nuggets, fruits and dips, homemade granola, uh, meats cooked in crock pots, vegetables, hamburgers, squash fries, salads, and lots of choice of breads and desserts. <clears throat> 